What's your reaction if your football coach does this? Now, to date, Mel Tucker, Jim Harbaugh, and Dan Campbell have not gone this route. They've been very quiet. The context of this is Ron Rivera was asked about uh, an aval. Well, hold on here. He, it was Sports Illustrated and Albert Breer. All right, Albert Breer is a good NFL reporter, um, and he's normally very reserved publicly. Uh, but he was speaking to Albert Breer, and the subject of misinformation regarding the vaccine came up. Now, Ron Rivera's football team at one point, and I have to check. You know, the daily update. At one point, Washington had the lowest vax rate of anybody in the league. Now, the NFL, just for further context, has basically made it a competitive disadvantage for you not when you don't get vaccinated. Uh, If you have an outbreak, uh, they can go after your salary. You can forfeit the game. It's going to count against your record, etc. The NFL has also made life for unvaccinated players, more difficult. Uh, can't have family travel on the road with you. Can't leave the hotel. Got to wear a mask. And the protocols to get back on the field to, you know, do your job, way more difficult. You're gone for an automated period of time. Like, there's a lot to this. Well, Ron Rivera decided to go out, and he had a few things to say. Now, whether you agree with this, disagree with it, the question I have is simple. I am wondering out loud if a coach is taking his own future in his hands by talking like this. Look, Mike Zimmer basically went out and said he's got some psychopaths on his team. He's got idiots on his team. Mike Zimmer went out and said, I can't believe some of the things these fellas believe. And they just won't take the damn thing. And, and of course, Kirk Cousins you know, decided he was going to put a plexiglass wall around himself instead of taking the vaccine. Well, I don't think the Vikings are going to have a good season. And Mike Zimmer probably divided his locker room a little bit because when you go out and you call your players nutbags, probably not good. Well, here's what Ron Rivera told Albert Breer. Quote, Gen Z is relying on this, referring to their phones. And you've got some, quite frankly, effing bass dolls that are putting a bunch of misinformation out there leading people to die that's frustrating to me these people are allowed to have a platform and then one specific news agency every time they have someone on i'm not a doctor but the vaccines don't work i'm not an epidemiologist but the vaccines will give you a third nipple and make you sterile come on that to me should not be allowed That's Ron Rivera. Now, whether you agree or disagree, let's look factually at something. Ron Rivera, in fact, had cancer. Ron Rivera beat it. Ron Rivera is immunocompromised. He's got a dog in the fight here. He's also the head football coach of a team that has Super Bowl aspirations. No, they're not the favorite. They're not the Green Bay Packers. They're not the L.A. Rams, and they're not the Niners. But they're in that next tier of teams that can win a division, can host a playoff game, and has arguably the best unit in all of football, which is their front four. Ron Rivera's business is football. Unvaccinated people who happen to play football affect Ron Rivera's business. So he's vested personally that he's immunocompromised. He's invested professionally because it could F up his team season. Now, are those biases? They are. We're just dealing in the context, and I'm laying the groundwork for this. My question to you is, what is your reaction if Dan Campbell came out and said this? Those are, Rico, to say that those are strong words would be an understatement of biblical proportions. No, He went ham, which doesn't stand for a lunch meat. No. Stands as hard as a mother bleeper. He went after it. Now, I will tell you this. I happen to agree with his message, and I am exhausted by people. I'm also growing concerned we're going to have our sports affected by people who don't want to get their hokey pokey, and that's another frustrating point. But those are my personal biases. I will tell you that whether I agree with what he said or not, I really think you are taking your team's season in your hands when you do it. 
I think it's risky. And I'm, there are guys on that team who disagree with what their coach just did. And when you go out and you call them bleeping bass dolls, which rhymes with what he really called them, boy, Rico, that's a risky proposition there, no? It is. And I, and I guess I look at it a different way. When, when he called them the, uh, the F.A.'s, I thought he was talking about people who put the misinformation out there on the phones that his players read. Okay. I didn't take it as he was calling his players that, but saying you got these, you know, people out here who put this stuff out that the Gen Zs are relying on. And then, you know, you got networks who says, I'm not a doctor, but I'm not an epidemiologist, but that's how I saw. It. Now, here's the thing about Ron Rivera. He can get away with this where Dan Campbell probably couldn't because mm. as we talk about with the gambling stuff, he has skin in the game. He has a reason why he needs his team vaccinated because, as you said, he is compromised. So he can't be around a bunch of players and catch this disease. It could be detrimental to him, yeah. not for his coaching. But it's for fascinating. His life. And again, I've tried to keep a context with this where I really don't care what your opinion is about what he said. It's more about what do you do when your coach goes out and does this? Look, we talked about Mike Zimmer. I think Mike Zimmer put his team behind the eight ball because, let's face it, guys like Thielen and Harrison Smith and Kirk Cousins, the team leaders, are who he called out. He basically called them dumb. Whether you agree with what Zimmer said or not, we're talking about from a football perspective. Look, we haven't seen anyone locally talk like this. Tucker, Harbaugh, Dan Campbell, they've flown pretty under the radar. Probably the smart move for their team and for their needs. Is it the smart move to have a platform and not use it? I tend to differ on that. But it's not mutually exclusive. You can do what's right for your football team, but not do what's right overall. But it's a, it's a fascinating point in time because NFL coaches never are willing to tell you anything about their team or what they feel on things. But we're seeing NFL coaches at a higher clip now speaking their minds. And I think it's a very dangerous thing to do football-wise. And I just wonder where you guys are at with it. By the way, Jason, who just hung up, I probably didn't want to talk to you anyways, Jason, because you had a talking point that I'm not interested in. Oh, it's up to the individual if they want to get vaxxed or not. No, not really. Please go away. I didn't even ask you your opinion on this. In fact... Because I treat most of you like preschoolers, I set this up so I didn't have to get phone calls like yours. And then I don't have to listen to your 3 by 5 cards. And we could just actually talk sports. But see, that's the problem. Some of you just won't allow it. Oh, my body, my choice. Really? It's your decision to smoke. You can't do that in public. Why? Because it affects other people. If you don't get vaccinated, it affects other people. Please don't bore me with this. I'm not doing a vaccine show today. I'm talking about an NFL football coach going on a rampage about a pandemic that his players have strong opinions on because damn near half of the Washington football team isn't vaxxed. Now, Jason, if that makes your tiny brain explode, do yourself a solid. You can go to where people will listen to you, social media. Go and talk to them. I'm sure you're a part of an anti-vax group. Go, hang out with them, hang around the punch bowl, do whatever you want to do. I, me, Mike, not interested. Go talk to your doctor. I'm not a doctor. Why do you care what I have to say? Talk to your doctor. See what he or she has to say. Don't call me. Don't waste our time. I'm talking about Ron Rivera. Let's see if we can stick to that. I bet you can't. And then I'll tell hey, you Mike. what's going to happen to you. <laughs> you're gonna ride on the ss bye-bye because i'm done wasting time with you fools do whatever hey, it is Mike. you want to do stop <laughs> calling me about it did you hear what ron rivera had to say but did you hear <laughs> what ron rivera had to say Oh, man. Well, it's funny because in that article, too, he talks about how, 
you know, one of his players came up to him and with a big smile says, hey, coach, just got my second vaccine. I said, right on. He said, had to. Mama, new baby, got to, coach. Got to be careful for others. And I said, that's great. Plus, with the variant, he looked at me and said, what variant? I said, you know, the new Delta variant. You, you, you know about that? And the player had no idea. So, apparently, <clears throat> you know, it's good that people are getting this, Mike. But the Delta variant, I, I, I do believe that we've hit the point of just – vaccine fatigue where it is become the automatic shutdown you just go to your corner when anybody mentions anything about this and you just hit your talking point yeah there's no real corner here against it there's no real corner anymore for me i'm just done with everything i don't care i have a bad feeling this is already going to impact our football season and i just do not want to think about that i don't i you know again i hope i'm wrong Hope everything is just, you know, the Lego song. Everything is awesome. I want to I, I I, I go to a bunch of football games. But when you see NFL teams like the Saints doing proof of vaccination, man, that ain't everything all right. That's distinctly everything's not normal. No, but here's the thing. If you're fully vaccinated, you can go to these. No, I know. You show your proof and go. Now, you know, you got to hope that nobody's buying the cards off the black market, which is astounding to me that – but. Then again, it makes sense because everybody was posting their photos online. I know. Hey, I got my shots, and somebody took that. So, so look, here's what it boils down to. It's about Ron Rivera doing what he thinks is right as a person with a platform, but it's probably wrong as a football coach and kind of having that discussion. But I'm sure we can't have that discussion because we can't have nice things. So we'll just go to the people and see where they are. David, you got anything you want to add, brother? No, you're right on point. Go ahead. Hey, David. Did you hear what Ron Rivera had? <laughs> they said. say two four eight five five three nine ninety seven ninety seven. Paul's up next. Ninety seven one. What's up, Paulie? Hey, how's it going? Good. Hey, I'm going. I'm going through this cancer stuff with my wife right now, and she's getting treatment through U of M. And a huge discussion. This started last November. A huge discussion with her oncologist, and she said you're just as much at risk with the regular flu when you're undergoing treatment as you would with COVID and her immune system bounces back up really after chemotherapy, your, your system bounces back, your white blood cell count goes up and that's where your immune system starts fighting from is the white blood cell. So that I disagree with what you said with that. Okay. Well, here's a line from the piece from Ron Rivera saying his bout with 2020 cancer leaves him compromised and is at risk for a bad outcome if he catches COVID. Paul, I don't know. Go talk to Ron Rivera's doctors. I'm, I'm living it right now. I'm telling you. That's man. fine. I'm That's your right experience. Now. Do you know Ron Rivera's cancer, his doctors, his immune system? Paul, what are we doing? We're talking about Ron Rivera. And I hate I know, that your I'm, wife's I'm, going through that. But this isn't I'm, the conversation I'm having. The conversation is you're not, you're not being honest with your listeners. Go to hell. How about that? I'm honest with you. Go to hell. Don't pass go. I don't even believe that you believe in God. Go somewhere not nice. I don't want to speak to you. How's that for honesty? I just read you a line from the ducking article. Verbatim. Verbatim. A word you can't spell. Verbatim. You're telling me I'm being dishonest. You decide to take your wife's experience, which is wholly different than Ron Rivera's, apparently, and you want to accuse me of being dishonest. Here's the best part, Paul. The ultimate dishonesty is you calling up and not answering the question. Ron Rivera speaks his mind as a human being with a platform, and Ron Rivera is a football coach. But see, you couldn't do that because you wanted to put your beliefs out there into ether. That people with cancer don't have compromised immune systems. Congratulations. I'm glad your wife doesn't. Yeah. Ron Rivera does. His words. Right from the article. Paul. You people are insufferable. Insufferable. I ju- it is just... Dude, I set this up where a kindergartner could call in. I didn't even set the topic up the way I want to do it. I don't get to do what I want to do. Because you people can't handle it. I set this up so even the biggest low-grade idiot 
could dial the numbers, boop, boop, beep, boop, beep, boop, boop, and participate. And then you F me like that, Paul. You F me. Just stick to the plan, Stan. Can't do it. Can't do it. We're going to start playing COVID bingo on this show. Mm-hmm. Oh, well, what about my uncle who died from the vaccine? Did your uncle talk to his doctor? Well, no. Goodbye. Oh, well, what about this one person who got Bell's palsy in Canada? Whoever said it's a non-zero. You know what else is non-zero? An energy drink. Supplements. Ever work out at a gym? Non-zero. Jogging. Oh, smoke? You like alcohol? Non-zero. Get out of bed. Non-zero. Sex. Non-zero. Probably taking a poop. Non-zero. I'll bet you someone died pooping today. Not going to poop anymore? I I just can't. I cannot continue this lunacy. 